I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. The process of self-discovery is a long journey. It is layered. It is sometimes complex and sometimes unique for each person. Sometimes you might be too involved and too engrossed in routine, regimented, regular activities and religious activities that religion sometimes can become the assassin of the intellect. You dare not think for yourself. Remember Reverend Jim Jones from America that went to Guyana and led about the 900 and something people to commit suicide in the 70s, that phenomenon is coming again. There are a lot of cults like churches, organizations, and in fact, confraternities are on the increase in Nigeria, gangs, and all kinds of things. You see, after the, you must list, look for the last video I made on self-identification, the realization that will lead to distinction and separation. But sometimes, your self Actualization is the outcome of self-identification. But most times, because of the, particularly in Africa, culture makes us think alike. The kind of education we receive makes us think alike. Religion makes us think alike. Even poverty makes us think alike and politics occasionally tribalism and regionalism calcify our brains we think like where we come from we think like the, the religion we belong to we think like the region we come from we think like the political party we support and you can never ever achieve self-actualization if you get immersed in such systems. So most people, from Socrates to Plato to Aristotle to Archimedes to Engels to, um, what's his name, the man, Division of Labor, Adam Smith, to Karl Marx, to Max Weber, all these social scientists, they, they stood as outside society and observed society and then in the process of observing society they also realized how different they were from society from Seneca to Marcus Aurelius to several people Longfellow and all that so you you, you there are times you, you stand aside and then you observe society. When I go to public places, I always fold my hands and observe, and my mind will be walking. I don't stay long, but if I'm there, my mind will be walking. I'll be studying society. So, but if that is not possible with you, if you have been too addicted to society, sometimes God brings somebody to identify you. Um, God told Jeremiah, no longer say I am a child. Say, before I formed thee in thy mother's womb, I knew thee and set thee apart to be a prophet to the nations. For Isaiah, he said, the year King Uzziah died, I saw God. That might be a calendar year. It might also be a metaphorical statement that the cataclysmic experience of the death of Uzziah 
made him to realize that Uzziah is not is not God. Like the day the year um, Emperor Hirohito told the Japanese that he is not a god, they should not worship him. So there is this story. I was in um, I was in South Africa. I was in um, one part of South Africa, Primrose, in Johannesburg. And um, a woman was not selling books. She told me she was not selling books. And I always have this principle that we are imitators of God and panpsychism that the whole of our environment hears. So I told her, go to your shop tomorrow and call customers to come. See, customers from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, from the whole of South Africa, come, let my phone start ringing. And she tried it. And she said her phone rang throughout the day. Uh, Ministry of Education bought books, several people bought books. And then she gave me a carton of books. And one of those books was Tales Out of Africa. And one of the Tales Out of Africa was written by John Agri. And it was about the heart of an eagle. And I've written a book on it, Born to Soa. I've also preached that message and it's a very powerful message. And John Agri wrote that there was a man who picked an eaglet that fell in, in, in its test flight. You know, the, the mother eagle will release the children from the nest. They will start falling and then it will dive and pick them up in its wings. So, but this one, there was a storm. And you know, eagles soar against the storm. And the eaglet fell. And a chicken farmer picked the eaglet and um, reared it among chickens. Then one day a naturalist came there and saw this eagle among chickens. Number one, it was bigger than the chickens and um, it was there with them eating from the ground, free range. And um, you know, um, eagles live on heights, but sometimes if you don't know yourself, if your father is a lion, you behave like a goat. And so, she, it was eaten with chickens, got used to them. And because its talons, you know, the, the, the claws of an eagle can grab a rabbit and hold it very tensely and fly with it. An eagle can carry up to 20 kilograms, something nearly more than its weight, and fly with it. And so it's the, the talons of an eagle are not designed for claw, um, for scratching the ground. So it was with people that were not his type doing something that it was not designed for. You see some of your frustrations and some of the reasons why you are not progressing. You are doing what you are not designed for. Remember in one of my videos, I said design would necessitate designation but if you work with on insightful people they will designate you to do what you are not designed for and you will remain small throughout life as long as you are doing that uh, i think it is a nigerian goalkeeper he was a striker before he became a goalkeeper and he's one of the best goalkeepers we've ever produced I think um, George Campos, that flamboyant goalkeeper for one country from South America, used to be a striker until their goalkeeper was sent off and he came in as a goalkeeper. So there are people who play roles they are not designed for and they remain small. Can you kindly ask yourself what you are doing? Do you really enjoy it? Do you think you are designed for what you are doing? Or you are just designated, marking time? How old are you and how long can you continue doing that? Just think about that. Can't you see that you are not happy? Can't you see that you are frustrated? Some of you in Europe and America, you don't need to be there, frankly speaking. You don't need to be there. If you've gone there, why don't you think of being where you can function best? 
And so, um, the naturalist told the farmer, he said, this is an eagle. The farmer said, yes, I know it's an eagle. He said, but I've trained it to be a chicken. You see, as an African, the Western education, the Christianity that was brought by the white man, and Western media, CNN, BBC, they train you to be like a chicken. Currency exchanges, IMF, World Bank, the Bretton Woods institutions, they teach you to reason like a chicken. For those of you who are African Americans, the reason they removed some of the historical facts that you don't learn in history is to train you to be like a chicken. For those of you in Nigeria, the reason they no longer teach history in schools is to make you think like a chicken. The poverty in Africa is weaponized, is to make you think like Stalin's chicken. The feathers are removed and you are bleeding and you see um, corn and you will run towards it. So the chicken mentality. And so the man said, it is an eagle. It, is, it still has the heart of an eagle and I can make it fly. The man who trained him like it, your salary can make you think like a chicken. In fact, the way you are, you are pampered in your workplace can make you think like a chicken. And uh, uh, he said, I can make it fly. It still has the heart of a, an eagle. The farmer said, try. And he carried the eagle and put, went to the top of the house and shook the eagle, say, eagle, you were born to be an eagle. You are not supposed to be among chickens. Eagle, fly, fly, shook the eagle and threw the eagle up. <coughs> Excuse me. The eagle jumped down to go and eat chicken food with the chicks down. Adultery is chicken food. Fornication is chicken food. Bribery is chicken food. Political money is chicken food. Very few politicians are richer than top industrialists. Chicken food. Some friends that you associate with are chickens and they teach you chicken food. And the eagle was speaking chicken language. Sometimes you speak chicken language. There's a lounge near me there. You, maybe you are hearing the sound. They are there now dancing to Afro beats. They don't even understand what they are singing. The Yoruba words they are singing. The Igbo words they are singing. They are speaking chicken language chicken language when you say all men commit adultery that's chicken language you're talking like a chicken when you you start to bleach your skin you are reasoning like a chicken so the the, the eagle came down down them started eating chicken food again there is a lady you need to leave there is a side chick you need to abandon there is a cult you need to leave there is a friend you need to leave he's a chicken he doesn't think reason well and then uh, the naturalist said, I can still make it fly. The owner of the eagle said, you can't make it fly. Then the naturalist took the eagle and set the eyes of the eagle, you see, against the rising sun. When you go to Johannesburg, there are some uh, cuboidal mountains. They are, they are golden colored. They are made from they, are, they were heaped together from mining gold. And then the sun was rising and the man carried the eagle and focused the eagle on that height and even beyond that height. And the rays of the sun, an eagle has two, two uh, what is it is called, um, two nictitating membranes, two eyelashes. So there is the former uh, front one when he wants to fly against the the wind it opens the front one and uses the translucent one it can see but 
uh, particles can hit its eye. And the retina of the eagle is sensitive to sun rays. So the man carried the eagle, focused it on the early morning sun from Johannes, in Johannesburg and the or one South African city where there are hills. And he saw the, this, saw the hill and then the rays of the sun he hit the, the eyes of the eagle, the retina of the eagle. And the eagle screamed. Yeah! There is a scream in him that the scream of the eagle instead of chicken language. And then it shook violently, shook violently. This time the man did not shake it. It shook violently and flew out of the man's hands and flew away. And the naturalist said, you see, it still has the heart of an eagle, even though it has lived among chickens. When the eagle came visiting the next time, all the chicks ran away, they ran into their, their, their cages. Listen to the interpretation of that story by John Agri. Number one, you can be conditioned to live like chickens. Number two, you need somebody to identify your potentials. People like scouts, somebody like Saw Akim Olajuwon playing basketball, uh, Abdul Karim Jabba. People saw them and picked them up and um, introduced them to the Houston Rockets or wherever they introduced them to, and their potentials flourish. You must pray. Let a Pharaoh's daughter set his eyes on me. Let a Shunammite woman perceive that I am a man of God. You see, so you need people who have insight to look at you to remove insult. And you must pray those prayers. And then the, the, you must dare to, you must pray that whoever has identified you that is stimulating you must be patient enough and not give up on you. And you must also pray against farmers that are rearing you like chickens. The French territories um, in Africa are breaking away from the chicken mentality of the French policy of assimilation. So, wow! Then, dare to have a second try. Then, if you are raising children, and you, even you as an adult, try to look for the right stimulus in your life. When I used to go to the airports and see people traveling, I would tell myself one day I will travel. One day I will fly from this airport. And I, I flew several times. So try as much as possible. Conceptualize. Conception will lead to delivery. Perception will lead to performance. So I saw the sun rays. The sun rays represent the Holy Spirit. Stimulated the retina of the eagle. And the eagle flew. I prophesy upon you. Somebody will identify your potentials. Somebody will see the strength in you. Somebody will see the future in you. Somebody will take a chance on you. Somebody will invest in you. Somebody will be patient in, with you. You will disappoint the farmer. No matter how long he has helped you, a time has come that you should not be addicted to chicken food. You are an eagle. So are. I don't care how long you have been stagnated. Go and stand in the front of the mirror and scream and say, I am an eagle. I used to call myself the eagle. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I hope this message is one of the best messages you've ever listened to. Like it. Share it with others. And send me a message on plus 234-7052-136763. And we have properties for sale. God bless you.